Well, we've now seen multiple cases that have been either reversed or overturned. I mean, what does this say about Tennis's anti-doping policies and their suspensions, which when it goes to Cass, it's kind of like, no, we're, we're going to we're going to cut that off. I, I mean, it's very difficult. I, I've been a part of the doping policy and, and gone through the blood passports and had been woken up at 5 a.m. to get to get drug tested. And it's it's rigorous. And I don't quite understand how the blood passport was able to get thrown out. And that's also something that tennis needs to look at. I think there is a big problem within tennis as far as what are our policies? What are we going to stand by as an organization? And I think that becomes more and more important as we go along and progress within the tour. And I think it takes a larger conversation, not only with the players, but also with all the bodies and leagues that come with the tennis tour. And I think there is also, there's a little bit of confusion even, even within the tennis tour, as you're talking about, Coco, with, you know, the appeal process, you know, which, which appeals are stronger, which appeals don't stand up as much, and how some of these get overturned, some of them end up standing, how long the suspensions are, some some feel longer than they should for a certain uh, a certain activity. So, you know, it's difficult for the public to understand it when there is so much confusion even within the tennis community. 